Hey everybody, this is an exciting a new video for you. Legion of the Damned Codex. This codex is proving to be a little more complicated than I thought. So instead of opening with new units, I'm going to open with the fluff, which quite honestly is one of the most interesting things to me because nobody really knows anything about the Legion of the Damned. Well, here's your chance. Here's the fluff. You get it first from me now. Legion of the Damned. Of all the legions of the Imperium, one of the strangest is that of the Legion of the Damned. For those who know where to look, there are many corroborated accounts of these otherworldly warriors, their unexpected appearance upon a desperate battlefield, and their sudden and inexplicable disappearance at the battle's end. Inquisitor D. Meloriac, Ordo Kronos, which is a hint right there, Ordo Kronos. There is a legend whispered in secret by a suspicious few that the Emperor has the loyalty of a force from beyond reality, an army of vengeance and of flame. A brotherhood of warriors who appear at first glance to be space marines, but quickly prove to be more lethal than even those most formidable of warriors. This force appears unbidden when all hope seems lost, striding from their hidden netherworld to bring retribution to the Imperium's foes. Once their bloody work is complete, they vanish into myth once more. These warriors are variously said to dwell in the space between this world and the realm of the warp. In the hopes and dreams of desperate men, in a pocket of reality eternally lit by the fires of hatred, Rare is the man that has witnessed the sudden violence of their attack. Rare still are those with the strength of will to keep their sanity intact afterwards. This force is known only as the Legion. More specifically, the Legion of the Damned. Saviors from Beyond Little is truly known about the Legion, though a few truths have come to light as reports of their manifestations have been collected and compared. They invariably attack to save some part of the Imperium from disaster, a fact that implies they have powers of prediction that even the most gifted seers and prophets cannot rival. Whenever the Legion of the Damned appears on the field of battle, they do so without warning. Bursting out of a sulfurous cloud of flame, they stride from nothingness adorned with icons of the grave. With terrible efficiency, they cut down the foe. Not a wasted motion nor a spoken word given pause to their dark work. The Legion is always clad in ceramide of deepest black. Despite their surroundings, whether they appear in brightly lit heaven of a planetary governor or under the glare of a sun at its zenith, their armor seems to consume natural light. Even direct torchlight does not illuminate them. Instead, the pale bones and death heads emblazoned on their armor are lit by a lambent fire, their armor flickering as if each legionnaire had been set alight by some combustible chemical. It is more likely these pyrotechnics are psychic in nature, for they blaze bright whenever the legion's blades sink into the flesh of their victims. There have been several accounts of legionnaires becoming little more than pillars of flame at the height of an engagement. On such occasions, the individual will fight with terrible ferocity before succumbing to the flame and disappearing from reality. Yes, 
there will be a unit for that. To witness the Legion of the Damned fight at close quarters is to observe true martial prowess, for they combine brutal power of Space Marines' gene-enhanced physique with the expertise and insight of a veteran's weapons master. Knives plunge deep through exposed joints and into thundering hearts. Bone-clad fingers stab through throats and eye stockets before returning red and wet to the triggers of their guns. Here and there, a hurled combat knife claims the life of an enemy trying to escape, never aiming to wound, always to kill. The legionnaires attack with an economy of motion that leaves even the warriors of Adeptus Astartes wide-eyed and surprised. Through their ornate, though their ornate suits of ceramite are as efficacious as those worn by any space marine, the legionnaires are able to shrug off wounds that would cut apart even a warrior clad in tactical dreadnought armor. Energized blades slice them without resistance. Melta beams and plasma volleys pass right through them without causing the slightest harm. Sometimes such deadly weapons find their mark, inflicting horrific damage and yet not slowing the legionnaires in the slightest. Those who witness such ethereal slights at first conclude that their deliverers are some manner of ghost or spirit. Though the destruction of the apparitions met out soon puts the lie to the idea that they exist only beyond the veil. The impression of burning vengeance is always uppermost in the minds of those that witness the Legion of the Damned on attack. Not only do their bolter shots ignite the air in stabbing lances of energy as legionnaires march towards their foe, but they bring to war a great many flamers, heavy flamers, and multi meltas, incinerating with pitiless efficiency those foes that cower from their sudden assault. Those enemies that simply stand agog at their sudden change of fortunes, are blasted apart with expertly placed mass reactive bolts. However, after action picked analysis has put a mysterious twist on even these most fundamental of Adeptus Astartes kill tactics. Imperial scholars have concluded that the legionnaires are able to fire far more bolts from their weapon than the ammunition capacity of their clips would suggest. Indeed, no footage has ever been recorded of any kind of weapon reloaded, even in the most protracted of engagements. Once the tide of battle has been turned, and those in need of rescue have been freed from the threat that has clothed around them, the legionnaires vanish from sight, some witnesses say they looked away for a second only to look back and find nothing there. Others, that the legion shimmers before disappearing, like a fading holograph. The strange static that accompanies these disappearances prevents any proper record of their exit from the field. Those monitoring devices that are able to steal evidence of a legion manifestation invariably have machine spirits that are badly traumatized and have to be coaxed back to life by a talented magos or tech marine before they will yield any secrets at all. A peculiar property of any mass apparition is that it will quickly fade from memory. If an investigator wishes to obtain any kind of first-hand account, he must visit those who have witnessed the incident within days, preferably hours, for the prescience of these strange space marines erases itself from the mind as much as a dream or nightmare. Nevertheless, the scent of brutal burnt flesh lingers in the nostrils and on the tongue for weeks 
years, or even the rest of the witness's life, resulting in disturbing thoughts that can never quite be traced back to their source. Prologue. I tell you, if it hadn't been for my quick thinking, we would all be dead. I even saved the child, if you think about it. Those horrible Eldar were everywhere, all shiny black skin suits and silver blades, slashing, killing. I haven't slept since, but I've still soldiered on for the sake of my people. They'd killed off all of my staff, even the ones I knew by name. Needless to say, I didn't fight them. No, indeed. Only a fool would have stuck his head above the guardrails with all that screaming going on. Just look at what happened to the gubernatorial guard. I don't even think a single one made it out alive. Well, anyways, if I hadn't prayed, then everyone in the palace would have died. Or been, you know, taken. But I did. I had the wit to do it, even though the rest of them were busy shouting and fussing with weapons and such like. And do you know what happened? The emperor answered me, of course. Well, he didn't speak to me as such, but he did hear my prayer. Oh, yes, that's why those space marines rescued us. The ones decorated with bones and surrounded by flames. Flames of vengeance, I tell you! Oh, they were a mighty lot. Every bolt, every thrust of the blade, and another grinning Xenos died on the marble flag zones. Take that, you heathens! I dismissed the battled brothers after their work of done, of course. And off they went, with commemorable speed seemed to vanish into their haste to obey. What the Imperium needs is more staff like that. You can take that to your masters for free. As for the child, well, they're already calling her Saint Mylesa. Quite ridiculous. I remember her when she was still small and in swaddling clothes. She didn't look like a saint back then all red-faced and bawling, stained with her own vomit in an industrial scoop they'd made into a cot. Good luck to her, I say. Even if she is a hell-tainted witch that deserves to be burnt on the auto pyre. <laughs> Marquis Emiliakis van Outrelich. Out Outrelich. <clears throat> Planetary governor of seven hells and that is some fluff for the legion of the dam enjoy troop descriptions coming next bye